This represents a typical adult intubation. The technique, although not optimal, represents an example of what I have observed in several thousand intubations done by emergency physicians taking the airway course. It works for adults, but as we will demonstrate, must be modified slightly for kids. Note position of the intubator and the visual line of sight used in order to see the glottic opening. Prior to a pediatric intubation, the ET tube should be marked clearly with tape at the appropriate lip to tip distance. This will serve to orient the intubator to the correct ET tube insertion depth for this patient. This is a 3.5 millimeter ET tube, so the tape is placed at approximately 10.5 centimeters. The pediatric airway lies higher in the neck than the adult airway. When doing direct laryngoscopy, the visual line of sight angle must be adjusted so that the intubator can look up to see the glottic opening. Note in this sequence the angle of sight of the intubator. Note how the angle of sight is more horizontal when intubating a child. Physicians who rarely see kids who do not make this adjustment may have trouble visualizing the glottic opening in children. Note in the side-by-side -side comparison of how the angle of vision must be modified when intubating a child. The other thing to remember is that since the pediatric airway is higher in the neck the laryngoscope blade does not need to be inserted its full length. Note in this sequence, the ET tube is being inserted directly in the line of sight of the intubator. This is not a problem in the adult as there is plenty of mouth opening space to visualize the tube passing through the glottic opening. In the pediatric patient, the amount of oral space for inserting the tube is limited. As such, Placing the tube straight into the trachea, as was done in the adult procedure, causes loss of ability to see the tube entering the glottic opening. For this reason, in children we enter from the side with the tube molded into a slight curvature as demonstrated in this sequence. Notice the mild curvature of the tube and the insertion entering at a perpendicular angle from the side permitting visualization of the glottic opening the entire time. Also, notice how the thumb of the right hand naturally hits the maxilla, which is the fixed or stationary bone, versus the mandible, which is mobile. Note that the tube was not held during and after cuff inflation, and frequently this is done during bagging. This cannot be done in a child, as the tube will slip out of position because there is no cuff to anchor it and because of the short trachea and the very little margin for error. Note again how the thumb of the right hand naturally hits the maxilla. The thumb and fingers should keep holding the tube, preventing movement until it is secured. Also note that the tube was inserted up until the tape portion. Remember we placed a piece of tape at the lip to tip distance. With the tube secured at this level, the tip of the ET tube should lie halfway between the vocal cords and the carina. To summarize, note the angle of sight used by the intubator. The tube is inserted entering from the side. Stop at the tape lip to tip distance. The thumb naturally stops at the maxilla. Keep the thumb fixed in place on the maxilla and hold the ET tube until secured. Here is the pediatric intubation in real time.